Hello, I'm Elaine Smith, the Artistic Director of the Clamor Theatre Company. We're holding these creative conversations with playwrights, with actors, with directors, so that you can find out more about Clamor Theatre and about the artists who work with us. Welcome to this edition of a Clamor Creative Conversation. Today, we're talking with Erin Considine, a playwright who, uh, who was selected for our fourth annual Playwrights Retreat and whose play Family Tree is going to be read on February the 26th on Zoom as part of Clay and Water 2022. Welcome, Erin. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Elaine. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to get to work with you and your group. Great. We're excited too. So please, um, why don't you tell our viewers just a little bit about yourself? It can be your bio, your background, your prizes, your productions, hobbies, anything you think we should know or you'd like us to know. Well, um, I'm here in the Atlanta area and I actually started out as an actress. I was an actress for about 20 years and then I got very, very ill and couldn't walk for a while. And that is when I started writing because you can only lay sideways on a couch, feel sorry for yourself for so long. So I started writing little 10 minute plays and then that kind of, they started gaining traction. And so I thought, oh, well, I'm stuck on the couch anyway. So I started writing full length plays and that it's only been a few years since I really kind of dove into the playwriting. Um, uh, beside that, I've also been in bookstores and libraries since I was 17 and I have a really fat dog <laughs> named Waffle, <laughs> spoiled old man. And um, he is thrilled to death that I've been playwriting instead of acting because I used to have to rehearse at home and he really hated it when I would yell at the invisible people, although he is my first reader. So <laughs> that's a little bit about me. I, um, I am gaining some traction as a playwright. It's been kind of spectacular and terrifying at the same time because I was a two-time Eugene O'Neill finalist. So that was amazing to get to that round as new as I feel to the playwriting world. I won the Tennessee Williams uh, Festival in New Orleans. And um, even with everything being closed down for COVID, I had two full productions over the last year that actually were done. They were socially distanced and it was a little weird, you know, coming from our theatrical world where we're kind of like a little basket of kittens and we're so used to experiencing stuff together and being all close together, but it still happened. So it's been a scary ride and a wonderful ride. And that's just a little bit about me. That's great, <laughs> thank you. So cool, let's talk a little bit about Family Tree. Uh, without giving away too many spoilers, tell me about the play. Oh, wow. Spoiler free. Um, well, uh, it deals with a woman who is, has dementia. And I had watched my own grandmother, of course, uh, lots of us have that experience where you're dealing with a family member who's struggling with Alzheimer's or dementia, and you kind of watch them degrade. But um, at the same time that I lost the ability to walk, I had what they very quaintly call brain fog. But what actually started happening was aphasia. Like I would lose words. I lost my ability to communicate. There's a, a line in the play where the, the actress jokingly says she couldn't remember the name for horse. She calls it a tall dog. That was not my grandmother. That was me. I was unable to communicate. I would lose whole conversations, which is great if you're like rewatching a TV show. It's always exciting. But if you're trying to get through daily life, it's maddening. So I wanted to give voice to somebody who was completely coherent of the world around them and had no way to, ex to express that. And I also wanted to give an actress, uh, a grown woman actress, the chance to play both sides of that. Someone who was struggling with that impairment and disability while still like youthful and flowering and vital on the inside and hilarious. And so there's siblings that kind of spin around her because the whole family has been through some trauma but if they, I wanted them to land together and I wanted that woman to have a voice. So that's where this play comes from. 
That's great. Well, we're really excited to hear it read. So now talk to me a little bit about why you decided to apply to the retreat. Because I'm too close to the material. Um, I, I cannot make a coherent decision about this at all because I know exactly how I felt, but that doesn't mean it's going to communicate to an audience at all. So I'm, I'm so excited to have a dramaturg and actors and people with an outside eye to tell me if it's too confusing to have an actress speak to the audience in one way and then speak to her children in another. And also I want to make sure that each of these characters get their own individual voices and that I'm not cheating anybody. And I have a tendency to spill into poetry, which I love, but can be a little too flowery. So I also need someone to be like, that's beautiful, Erin, but it's not a play. You have to take that part out. Right. So it's good. I love feedback. I love honest feedback. Uh, rewriting is what we do, you know? So, and playwriting is a team sport. We get nothing done. Theater, theater is a team sport. I miss my team. So I'm thrilled to be doing this right now. Good, good. Well, I was yes. also going to ask, you know, what you're hoping to get out of it, but I think I know now. So I don't yes. need to ask that question. <laughs> uh, so tell me, um, do you have a favorite play of your own? I do. Uh, and it is one that has not been produced, but I wrote a play. We lost a, a very, very, my husband's best friend, um, to suicide several years ago. And it took me a very long time to deal with that, of course. And I wrote a play dealing with it about soldier suicide and not, I know I sound like just, just, just rainbows and ponies all the time, everything I write. But this one, uh, the point is, is that all of us struggle and um, this play as well deals with that struggle, but it also deals with the humor that you use to cope and people finding hope again after these kinds of challenges. And 22 has been read in five states, five. It's won all kinds of awards and it has never been done with the actors in the same state. Never, ever, 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 ever because of stupid, stupid COVID. So <laughs> that right now is my favorite because it means so much. And I wrote it to be done as a way to work within a community to raise money for uh, service dogs for soldiers. I'm passionate about it. I think it is a life-changing thing. It is finally covered by the VA this last year. And um, so great. And so that is one that, you know, Hey, anybody watching <laughs> theater wants to hit me up, I'm ready to see that one done regionally because I think that the more theaters we can do it in, the more different areas we can raise money for those different communities that are doing this work with the service dogs, the bigger of an impact we can have, which was the whole point of that script. Good, good. So now my one of my favorite questions of these interviews is, can you tell me three plays that you may have seen or read that you really like by author, other authors and what you like about them? Oh, this question is so hard, Elaine. Um, I know, I know, that's what everybody says, but it's like my favorite question. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. I really, I can't, I can't super narrow it down. I'm gonna start with the cheesy one, which is of course the Shakespeare. Uh, as an actress, I did Much Ado About Nothing. I worked here with the Atlanta Shakespeare Company for years and years and years, and I did Beatrice three times. And that play and the wit and the fact that it's so contemporary with the fighting couples and it's just classic. So that one has got to always be one of my favorites. But then I skew very dark as a person. <laughs> and um, so you get to Sam Shepard as a play called Cowboy Mouth about this woman who has always felt very ugly, but she's still kind of trying to find herself as a woman in this really desolate landscape. And the, you know, he's he's so dark with his relationships, kind of like Tennessee Williams with an edge. So those two, so Cowboy Mouth is one of my favorites. You never see it done. It's like Orpheus descending with Tennessee Williams, same thing, two people you just love and you never see it done because it's so dark. And then recently, uh, Susan Laurie Parks, I kind of went down a hole with her because she is so funny, but so smart with her language and top dog underdog. Like you start with 
one named after Lincoln and one named after Booth and these two brothers. And you know where that's going because of the names. Like, you know where it's going to end. But it's so smart and it's so raw. And there's something about her and like August Wilson where they've got that same rhythm like Shakespeare, you know? And so I always end up back in that rhythmic language. I think it's because um, my, uh, my origins are musical theater. So if there's, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Sondheim, anybody that you could like <laughs> snap along to, I'm, I'm there. Good. Okay, cool. Um, I, as I say often that, you know, this question just makes me add to my reading list. Although most, some of those I know, Cowboy Mouth, I don't, I'll have to read that one. Um, oh, so this is great. Uh, you know, for our viewers, if you would like to know more about Erin, you can look for her and her work on the New Play Exchange website at newplayexchange.org. If you'd like to attend the free reading on Zoom of Erin's play Family Tree, it's on February the 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You can make a reservation on Clamor's website, which is also the place to go for information on our other events. It's clamortheater.org. And you can find us on Facebook as Clamor Theater Company. We post all those URLs in the description below. And if you'd like to see more interviews like this one, you can please hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Erin, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today and for letting our audience get to know something about you. We are so looking forward to the reading and we are very glad that you have been able to join us for Clay and Water 2022. Thank you, Elaine. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks.